see if I can even. Can we cross like, a leg? Of course. If we cross a leg, does, let's, let's, yeah. Yeah, does that make it a little tighter? <laughs> I don't think you can see my knees, to tell you the truth. Well, that's okay, but we're making more room. <laughs> Which, is there any? Oh, oh, I see, and it's solid on the side, so you can't yeah. like yeah. hang over the edge. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like an airplane chair. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> um, can I, oh yeah. yeah, can you give me one more? Can, can I you put my arm around can you guys? Can you tilt? Who she met, Gina met. No, see, I'm gonna do that again. <laughs> Try to put too much in a sentence and you mess it up. I have Ooh. zero confidence that we were gonna go with the one take. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'd never know I drove for five hours today, would you? Yeah. Don't I look Ooh. just totally refreshed? You do. Springtime fresh. <laughs> I am in Boyd County, which is Ashland, Kentucky, basically. And this is Angie, who is my late bloomer fan of about a year now. And this is my brand new late bloomer fan, Gina. And we are in Gina's lovely home on her lovely porch. And they met together in master gardener class. And we're gonna have a quick conversation about their class and how they got connected and um, and then what are we going to do? <laughs> <laughs> no clue. And so, ladies, tell me how you met in your class. Definitely Angie's question. <laughs> <laughs> My husband and I looked into signing up last year, but we were too late to start the class. So we signed up this year, and that's when we met Gina. We came in and sat down, and she came in and sat behind us. I think we had some, some similar things in common, and our personalities are kind of similar. We're both very inquisitive and very open <laughs> and have a passion for gardening. You, Angie, are from this area. You're living in the house that you grew up in and you're a new transplant right. to, to Kentucky altogether. Yes. And how yes. did you wind up in Kentucky? My husband and I moved here when he got a new job. We moved from Houston to here. You got this big yard and you said, I'm going to have a great garden. Oh, absolutely. I wanted to come here and garden, uh, something that I didn't have very much opportunity to do before because we were always living overseas. Didn't you say that your grandfather? My father was speaking to oh, your me father. after he passed away. He was a very big gardener. It was his biggest passion in life. So my dad would put coveralls on. He would go outside and he would work from the minute he got home until he couldn't see. He'd come in for dinner. And people would ask to speak to Dr. Bissonette, and he'd say, I am Dr. Bissonette. And they said, no, no, Dr. Bissonette, I am Dr. Bissonette. They thought he was the gardener. I think he loved being a doctor, but he also loved sick plants. He loved to help, help them get back to, to healthiness. So that was the same general ability, diagnostic abilities. I think my dad liked plants because they didn't talk back and because they were beautiful and God's creation. He right. always felt closer to God in the backyard. You envision this big garden, yes, but but all of a sudden, when we got here, we found out that deer were very invasive, and that we would need to put up a huge deer fence in the backyard. Unfortunately, we have a beautiful backyard, and we can't figure out where to quarter off uh, where our raised beds are going to be. So it's going to be another year. A lot of people don't know that these type of courses are available in their hometowns. So how do they find out about something like that? Extension program is nationwide. The Master Gardeners program was started to get the latest information and most factual information to the farmers, to the people in the fields, who the, the people who were raising the food and needed to know the latest information on pests or diversity or crops. And the Extension Office was a way to support those farmers through the universities, land grant universities. Kentucky um, is a state that actually has two land-grant universities and through those universities research is done to discover and promote better gardening methods and for not only for the gardens for the environment as well. I was very fortunate to grow up on my grandparents farm and my grandparents were born in the hills in the hollers. They grew up farmers, they lived through the Great Depression. I was the grandkid, I was the kid who was always the tag along in the garden and loved it. I wanted to increase my knowledge of gardening to diversify from what I was just growing instead of just growing McCaslin pole beans, grow Chinese red noodle beans as well and, and Chinese yard long beans, um, blue lakes. There's so much diversity 
that I had not been growing and wanted to learn more about growing. I wanted to learn how to become a more responsible gardener. We are actually master gardeners in training because you are required to volunteer as a master gardener to receive your full certification. And that was extremely appealing to be able to bring my love of gardening and to share it with, with others. I have been inspired by my grandfather, fellow classmates, and especially late bloomer. Oh, wow. <laughs> I was watching a YouTuber called One Yard Revolution. And after his video ended, a suggestion came up to watch a late bloomer video. I like the name late bloomer because I have been a late bloomer to things myself and watched the video and was extremely impressed with not only the factual information, but the way the videos were put together, there was such quality and the music and the information. And not only that, but I really loved that you showed when you would mess up. You showed those flubs, you showed those mistakes. It was very inspiring to see what you were doing on such a small little property when I have three and a half acres. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you were getting these, this great results and I've been gardening my whole life and you've been gardening for five years. I was like, I've got to watch this lady. I've got to learn more. And, and the Master Gardener's class as well was, I want to learn more. I want to be better. I just want to be the best gardener I can be. That was one of the things that we bonded over in class actually was food sourcing, food responsibility. What is in our food now that we're eating? The prevalence of major illnesses, of disease, of intellectual and developmental disabilities. The one thing that reaches every single person in this country is food. It's what we eat and the water we drink. So it stands to reason that something's not right. And the more that um, you research A Silent Brain, the book, the more you read about how we have lost over 80% of our bio agrodiversity in this country in the last hundred years. So not to be on a very downer subject, but that was one of the things that drove us mm -hmm. to Master Gardeners as well, is becoming responsible for our own food. Right. Instead of just going to the, the store and picking out whatever they choose to sell us from wherever they're selling it from, taking responsibility, taking that control. What can you grow in the winter in, in Kentucky? Um, in the winter time, we have really cold temperatures in Kentucky, so growing can be more challenging, but not impossible. You can do greenhouse, you can do cold frames. Each layer of protection can actually drop your cold hardiness zone. So, so we're here at zone six. My grandfather did cold frames where, you know, when you're poor, you can take an old window on top of haystacks even and have a little patch there that will survive in the winter. And you can also grow cold hardy crops. There's a lot of cold hardy crops that, you know, can be grown in this area and harvested up into and after Christmas. How many people were in your class? 12, Ooh, is that right? Mm -hmm. You know, like you were saying, your sister's working three jobs. Yes. And your brother-in-law's working three jobs. Yeah. It's a little hard to take a class and grow your own food when you're working all the time. It's it's tough here. This is a really economically depressed area. It's hard, there's a lot of poverty, and most people are good, solid working people in this area, and they're working two and three jobs, and it doesn't leave a lot of time. I was fortunate in that I had property, grew up on that property, and had been farmed for generations. So I had a bit of an easier start, but for people who, like my sister, are renting, they can't grow a garden in the in the earth because yeah. their lease isn't going to allow that they can do container gardens but i don't think a lot of people here yeah i think container gardeners are very underestimated especially. i've been a gardener my whole life and until i was watching late bloomer i did not realize what you could do with container gardens i would only add that i think a lot of people you were raised having farm fresh food i was raised having farm fresh food so if you're raised with it and you're used to it, when you go to the store, you know the difference. And it is such a big difference that I think a lot of people have never even experienced it, you know? And that, that for me was a motivation of why I wanted to go and take the class because I think all of us should be growing our own vegetables. I think we should find a way to do it with containers if we have to, or even soil sprouts like I was doing before in the windows, no lights very easy to do right. 14 days you have a crop and that's right can be more nutritious than even the full-grown vegetable you're just getting into this yes. and uh do you have any parting thoughts of inspiration for anybody uh who uh, might be watching this who's just just starting off well i would agree with angie that seeing you and your curiosity and your 
trial and error and not being stymied by the fact that there's going to be failure in gardening, but you have to fail in order to create. And eventually you have more successes than failures. And we are happy for your efforts and encouraging us. Well, thank you very much. I would recommend that people contact their extension office, their local extension office, which should be the county office, correct? Mm -hmm. So for us, it was Boyd County Extension. And um, sign up for a class. It's, it's worth it. And being able to network with other people who are professional gardeners and to give your time back to your community, well worth it. I just think that the whole gardening community is generous and that they want to spread the word. Mm. Every single one of us wants to spread the word. You know, we have different goals, but the important thing is just to start. Don't you think? Just yeah. get, just start. Just get started. Yeah. Right? Even if it sprouts in the window. Absolutely. That's right. Nothing wrong with that. Well, thank you so much thank for you. having me. And we're going to see a lot more uh, of Angie in the next video. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs>